Hey, welcome back to Questions About Life. I'm Brian Fleming. And I'm Daniel Broom. And we talk about questions uh, about life on this podcast. A lot of people, uh, they have questions about life and they're just not satisfied with the answers they've been given. Or some people even are, are afraid to ask certain questions because a lot of us were taught not that we're not allowed to ask certain questions. And so this is a show where we discuss a lot of those questions that we've had, that people we know have had. And you can even write into us at questions about life podcast questions about life podcast at gmail.com if you have a question about life that you would like us to discuss so we would love to get your feedback and discuss questions you have as well we have a whole list of our own but uh, if there's something you want us to talk about be sure to uh, send us an email and we'll we'll talk about that yeah so we did an episode uh, last week yeah yeah first uh, one so that's up on Apple Podcasts and anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. There was a video version um, that didn't work out for us, so hopefully this time you guys will be able to see us on video on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. I always like to have like uh, one one thought to kick things off because you and I, you are you'll have a thought or I'll have a thought. Yeah. And then it just turns into this tornado twister of thoughts and ideas and wondering. And uh, it's what turns into these conversations, which is why we even do this podcast. If you didn't hear the first podcast, the whole reason this came out, that we did a podcast, is because pretty much every time we go grab coffee or get some food, we, we end up having a discussion. And at the end of it, an hour, hour and a half later, we're like, dude, we should have recorded that. Yeah. And we did that about probably 50 times or 100 times over the past three or four years. And we're guys, so we're now getting around to doing this. Right. Now that we've talked about everything, no, I'm just kidding. There's an unlimited amount of stuff to talk about. I mean, it's the type of stuff we talk about is philosophy, sometimes politics, religion. Uh, there's no topic that's off the uh, off the docket for us, but we always do it in a, you know, people hear like political conversation and they think, oh, that sounds like a bunch of malarkey, you know, a bunch of arguing and stuff like that. But um, we don't. Uh, that's not how we talk about it. We we just. I've never had the desire to argue anything. If we if we disagree on something, it's kind of like, okay, I'm trying to connect the dots with what you're saying, and have I ever seen it that way before? Or, or okay, where does that lead back to, like, foundationally? Or is that – and you probably do the same thing with yeah. me, I would imagine, or some sort. Well, politics is maybe a bad example, too, because I think we probably <laughs> share a lot of the same politics. We, uh, Brian I think and so. our, Brian and I are both uh, U.S. Army veterans. Uh uh, did a similar job in the army. The only difference is Brian got blown up by a suicide bomber in Afghanistan, and I didn't. But uh, we were both infantry. You jumped out of planes, and I got blown out of a Humvee twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, if that tells you, that could probably you could probably draw some conclusions about where our politics lie. But that you know that being said, we're very open minded. I think it not it, yeah. in this example politically. Yeah. You know, if I if uh, I see or hear something. Uh, that doesn't necessarily align with my politics, I try to, instead of argue or get angry, I try to better understand where that person might be coming from. And that's, I think that's what a lot of our uh, conversations are about, too. Yeah. I mean, we agree on a lot of things, and, and we don't see uh, other things maybe uh, the same way, uh, but we always sort of walk away learning something from, from just sort of uh, yeah. brainstorming with each other. Well, like, if, if, if you don't know people... Who think different or believe different than you? You. This is no offense to you, but you are probably, you're probably such an uninformed person that you don't even know you're an uninformed person. Yeah. Like, like, like and how immature are we? If we can't be around people who have a, a different philosophy of life or, a different faith belief, or not one at all, or different politics. Yeah. Like I, we don't all have to agree, but it's like I'm. I'm. Maybe it's just me because I'm a genuinely curious person. Right. Oh, why do you believe that way? Oh, okay, that's interesting. You know, because I always walk away learning something, or I, I might start asking myself questions I never asked before. And I know that can be a fear for some people. Sure. Some people are afraid. You know, what if what if I question things I was taught I'm supposed to believe and uh, about this particular thing? And well, what if what if I start coming to the conclusion that's maybe not it? Um, and that the unknown is a scary thing for human beings, yeah. naturally speaking. An uncomfortable feeling, too, to, to yeah. maybe have to face that, 
oh, I was, you know, I was wrong all this time because our egos, just all of us have egos that don't like to be wrong. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, and, but when you're just a curious person, I think when you take that approach to life, just be curious. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing sinful. There's nothing biased. There's nothing racist. There's nothing whatever is you have out there or ism. Yeah. Um, being a curious person wanting to learn and understand, that's admirable, like extremely. But if you're not around people, if you're just around people who tell you what you want to hear, you have a bunch of yes men and yeah. yes women. And those, those people, like I used to kind of be that and I didn't know better, but I'm not now. And I'm actually a way happier person. Yeah. Because I found I love to learn. And like, if you have a different idea, I'm really curious. Like, man, I might actually learn something. Like, I yeah. might, I might learn something that leads to something that I really want. For sure. You know. You know, and I think you made an interesting point earlier about, um, you know, if you're somebody that's only been exposed to one viewpoint and stuff. I think we have a uh, sort of unique, uh, we have a unique uh, experience in being in the military because in the military. You know, it's like, it's almost cliche. It's like nobody's racist in the army. I mean, everybody's wearing no. green, you know, and, and, but it was weird when I heard people saying that a few years back, yeah. like politically, yeah, right. Racism in the military, in the military, I never saw racism in the military. Yeah. It's weird, right? I Cause you, you'll be like, personally. you'll be like, you'll spend, I don't know how many hours are in a week. Now you'll spend 90% oh. of your week with 24 times seven. I'm not good at math on the spot. Me neither. We're not mathematicians, is what, but let's say ninety percent of your week you spend with a, a guy from New Jersey that grew up in one hundred sixty-eight hours in a week. One hundred sixty-eight. Okay, so let's say one hundred forty hours a week, or sometimes one hundred sixty-eight hours in a week, or you know, times four in the month. You're spending with a guy from New Jersey that grew up, you know, in a gang in the hood. You're you're with somebody from Alabama in a town with a population of a hundred. You're there with somebody from Dallas, Texas. You're there with somebody that uh, California family immigrated here from Puerto Rico. Them too. You know, uh, so and a Middle Eastern guy. And <laughs> yeah, and we're all doing the same thing. We're all wearing the same clothes, you know. So you, it, it's easy to not um, be biased or whatever. Yeah, I mean, we're just we've just been exposed to a lot of different types of people and also went through struggles with them too. Yeah, there's there's something to be said about that that. If you really want to bind people together, make them struggle together. Yeah, struggle make them together. suffer together. Yeah. That's like a good leadership principle if you're a leader. If you get people suffering and struggling together, especially if, if they have to rely on each other. Yeah. Uh, like in the military, they're training more and more. Um, yeah. Like I, I never saw it. I literally never saw anyone as black or white. Yeah. Like, like I, obviously, I saw your skin color. I'm not going to be one of those, oh, I'm colorblind. Like, no, yeah. I see your color. I just don't care. Right. And when the bullets are flying... It's like, I don't care what your color, <laughs> your skin is. Um, if I'm in a tight spot and you can help me, please. Yeah, do your job. And yeah. I'll help you. Because sure. these people, all of them want the two of us dead. We have that in common, even if we yeah. don't like each other. Yeah, it becomes a, a real, a very bonding thing. I see that at CrossFit a lot, too, at the CrossFit gym. You know, yeah. those CrossFit workouts are incredibly difficult, especially now in the 100-degree heat. It's like 104 every day right now in Texas. Yeah, but yeah. that's I think that's one of the... Uh, the upsides one of the reasons people are attracted to crossfit because you 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 all go in you struggle together and then you know when it's over you, you sort of share that bond so but also it doesn't have to be like the way we met we we didn't serve together no we met each other well after the fact of getting out my and mother was, bought a couch for me off craigslist yeah and i brought my truck to pick it up for her. yeah and, and it was like Wait, you were in 11 Bravo? I was in 11 Bravo. I saw your airborne beret and hanging in one of your rooms, yeah. Yeah, and we instantly, like, were able to draw a ton of conclusions about each other. Like, oh, that guy was infantry. He's been through this. He's done this. And we, and we just assumed, we just already automatically knew that we had a lot in common. We've been through some of the same shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, 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 I don't know you, but, like, we've suffered in some of the same ways and uh, ways most people can't <laughs> understand. Because yeah. you, most people are never exposed to the extremes that the military, especially as an infantryman, will expose you to. Yeah. And let me ask you this. Um, you know, people see people of different color, different religion, different lifestyle, different whatever. I wonder why when we first meet somebody or we see some, not to meet them, mm -hmm. we just see them. And we, we almost instantly have something against them, like mm -hmm. this this pushback inside of us like oh she's black or or she's muslim or he's gay or um or they're a christian or you know we, we all had these like ideas that were i think were 
kind of brainwash or condition mm -hmm. to have um, of, like about other people. But I wonder why, like if when we see someone who we perceive might be different, why is our first thought now? I'd like to get to know that person. Like they yeah. might be really cool. I might be able to learn something. Why is our first knee jerk to be like, oh, I want to see who they're friends with on, on social media. They don't lean my way, so they must be that. Yeah. Like we label. They must be the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I wonder why we don't default to, hey, that's really cool. Their their skin color is different. Yeah. Like I think that maybe is uh like a that's a human nature thing and maybe an evolutionary trait because, you know, I don't know, a thousand years ago or five thousand years ago when we were in small tribes or whatever, you see somebody or a group of people that doesn't look like you. Um, a lot of times that actually did mean danger. Like, oh, th those are Last time pirates. we saw someone different, they killed a bunch of our friends. Or, right, yeah. yeah, they kidnapped my daughter or something. And so That's true. it's an evolutionary trait. But yeah, I see your point, though, that it doesn't really apply to today's day and age the same way that it did. It's maybe a leftover thing. But on that point, though, uh, you know, you can take a step further, like, uh, you know how there's this phenomenon, and I think everybody agrees on this, that, um, you know, like, if you can give an example, like, oh, I'm going out for the job, but the boss's brother is also applying, so I probably don't have a chance. Or the job went to the boss's brother. Well, why did it go to the boss's brother? Because the boss knows his brother. They've known each other for a long time. Or you'll hear, like, oh, I would do anything for them. I've, I've known them all my life. Um, and the things that those have in common is that uh, you've known each other a long time. You've been aware of each other a long time. In contrast to that um, scenario you were talking about where you're just making a snap judgment about somebody you've seen for the first time. Yeah. But the, the truth of the matter is if you did get to know that person and formed a friendship or a relationship with them or didn't, you just kind of knew them, that you knew of each other, you worked side by side with each other for a while, the longer that goes on, the more loyal those people come to each other. And you don't see the differences as much. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like, um, there's that phenomenon, right? I would do anything for my family. That's because your families, you see them every day. You're very familiar with them. The more familiar we are with people, the more we're willing to. Like you're bonded more. Yeah. You can take it even a step further. Like, oh, I read in the newspaper, my neighbor killed somebody. And then I say to myself, there's no way John would do that. John would never kill anybody. I've known him. For, I've been his neighbor for eight years, right? I wouldn't believe it. But if I didn't know John, I'd go, that bastard, lock him up. So yeah. my point is, my point is like, it's interesting how we're, we make these snap ju hate judgments yeah. to strangers uh, when we don't just stop to, uh, to consider if I had just gotten to know this person a little bit, I'd probably be loyal to them, or they maybe they'd be, you know, or maybe vice versa. Well, and that could be manipulated too. Some people will do nice things for people because there's that law of reciprocity we have, where if yeah. someone does something nice, even if they don't ask it back, if you see that, if if I do something nice for you, and then you didn't know me, but you saw me on the side of the road broke down, mm -hmm. and you go, oh my gosh, that's that guy who bought my couch, and oh, he gave me like a fifty dollar gift card because hey, you're a veteran. Yeah. Well, then you saw me, you like you were way more inclined to help me. Yeah. You know, and there's there's that that reciprocity. Some people do that intentionally. Those are called manipulators and probably narcissists. But it, nonetheless, it works. When you, <laughs> something came to mind when you said, um, like, oh my my neighbor John. Yeah. I never saw it coming. Have you ever seen that Daniel Tosh stand up comedy bit? He's he's a he's talking about like something about like Americans are idiots or something. And at one point. He's like, um, he's like, you ever, you ever have that one neighbor? It's like, you know, like they do some crazy wild stuff. And he's like, you always get those people on the news going, I never saw it coming. I've, I've lived here for 30 years. Uh -huh. And he's like, he said something like, he's like, man, I've never known one person that I can't imagine doing horrible shit. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's like, he's like my own mother, she could burn down a nursery. <laughs> and and he, he's like, you get me on TV. I'd be like, um. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> but it's like, you know, like people are quick to defend. And he's like, he was just like, I'm not like, I, I don't put that past anybody. Yeah. You know, he was being funny, but um, it was actually, you know, kind of true. Like, you know, um, 
we we hide so much of what we are. Um, that's probably a like like you say like an evolutionary thing or like a survival thing or primal thing. Yep. You know, because like back in the day, like thousands or millions, however many years ago, if you were different than a tribe, the worst thing you could do is get kicked out of a tribe, because right. now you're in the wilderness alone. That's a death sentence. Yep. I think that's hardwired into us because nowadays a lot of people say things like, well, "I don't care what anyone thinks." I like that idea, and I used to say it. I just don't think it's true. I think it's cover up, and I, I don't care who you are because if you've been around any amount of time, you know, like we're tribal beings. Like we need yeah. people, and it's uh, human nature. Yeah. Now, I don't think it's black and white. I think it's. I think you you should care what certain people think, mm-hmm. and not what other certain people think. You know, if it's relevant to like your survival, your family, you know, your your health, like okay. You should be a little smart about this. Yeah. You know, as a white guy, I wouldn't run into the middle of a BLM riot and say something stupid. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember? Doc, was it Die Hard Two? Bruce Willis. They like they kidnapped his daughter. They had a bomb set, and they told him, "You know, you have to do what we say. We're gonna blow it up. We're gonna kill." They made him wear the sandwich board and walk through Harlem, mm-hmm. and it said, "I hate." Insert N word. N word. Wow. And they're like, you walk through the middle of Harlem. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. um, everyone's like, what in the hell? Like, are you, you know, because yeah. they wanted to like watch him get beat up, you know? <laughs> but it's like, yeah, that's not the smartest thing. I don't care what anyone thinks. If you were Bruce Willis and that was a, a real life scenario, yeah. I'll go do that. I don't care what anyone thinks. That's pretty stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so you should care what those people think because they'll probably murder you. Did he get beat up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He didn't die, but he got messed up. I don't remember how he got out of it. But it's like, well, in that case, he should care what people think. Even though he was, you know, a pretty tough dude in that movie. Um, You know, well, they got your daughter or whatever the scenario was. Yeah. It's like, you might want to care what some people think to an extent. Well, I guess it just sort of depends too, right? Like, don't take advice. You don't want to take business <clears throat> advice from somebody that's worked at uh, McDonald's their whole life. Yeah. It's like, don't give me business advice, you know, or uh, you got to consider who's giving you the advice, I guess, like, or, or what, uh, or the value of what, I guess you could, would need to assign a value to each individual on, on what, uh, to what magnitude do I need to worry about what they think? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, give an example, like, let's say that you're an aspiring entrepreneur and your parents are very safe. They, they only s- put money into savings and, um, no investing, never no owned investing. a business. They don't never owned a business before. They've always, you know, they, they're doing well. They got a nice 401k <laughs> and they've got a nice house and everything else. And they're discouraging you from become, you know, they're, or let's say they're not discouraging you from be an entrepreneur. Let's say that they're giving you advice. Well, if you want to get out there and be, you know, be successful in business, you got to do X, Y, Z. It's like, but they I don't know. know. I don't think I'm gonna take advice from you because <laughs> if that's the right advice, why aren't you doing that type yeah, of thing? I really, talk, I really talked to Mark Cuban for 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. If you could afford it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would have. I thought about it, you know, or stuff like that. So it's like, oh, you got yeah. a new business and you just made t-shirts and hats with swag and logos. Like you're going down, you're going nowhere. You could have put that money into, into like acquiring new clients and making money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, see that right there? That's a real thing. Sure. Like, sure. it's not that you can't make swag, but it's like, is that going to bring in customers? Paying, like, put your money where customers are being brought in. Mm-hmm. Not on, like, cute little things. I, so that's yeah. a good, perfect example of maybe, like, the parents who were safe and always worked a job, didn't invest. They might, that might be the difference, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But to, back, to the point, back to the point is, uh, you, so you're saying we should care to at least a degree what people think. Yeah, well, I like what you said about assigning value. Like, if I say something that really hacks somebody off, is that somebody who pays me five or ten grand a speech mm-hmm. and they bring me back every year or two? Well, if I'm willing to risk losing that because what I'm going to take a stand for is important enough to me, I don't care if it costs me that. Yeah. Not just that, but the lifetime of the business. Because if I'm getting five or ten grand a speech, um, I'm a professional speaker. If you don't know, I write books and I speak. Uh, if I'm getting that much for a speech, and I lose that business in 
over my lifetime, if they would have brought me back 20 more times at that rate, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't give up the $5,000, $10,000 speech. I gave up like eighty or $90,000 in business because, hey, maybe, maybe it was a political thing about, you know, gay rights or something like that. Or yeah. let's pick any social issue people want to burn cities down over. Yeah. Um, Defunding the well, police. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe the person hiring me was an outspoken homosexual advocate, or maybe they're just a homosexual. And I'm just using this purely as an example. Uh, it could be anything. But maybe that person falls into the category that I took a stand against. Yeah. And maybe they like me because they've always liked me and thought I was a great guy. But now it's like, now I've created this conflict. And I might not even know I created it. They just don't call back. Sure. And that's always been my bigger fear is not, not losing money. My biggest fear uh, as a speaker, as a, a writer, someone who influences, you know, I've had a lot of good influence on a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest fear is having that good influence and then doing something down the road that completely undoes the good where it's like, like the message that really helped to make a change in their life or realize something and heal in, in their life. Yeah. That they go, man, that Brian guy is not who I thought he was. What got into him? You know, would, now everything he taught me that kind of worked. Was it even real? Or like, yeah. you can't stop that from happening. But it's usually a misunderstanding too, right? That's the worst. Just being well, nobody does this. We think FaceTime happens on this. It yeah. doesn't. FaceTime is this. Yeah. Like, and people talk. People talk more respectfully when you're right here. You know. For sure. For sure. They yeah. they, quite, they they think before they speak more. Yeah, because you're a person to me, and in person, yeah. I can see that you're a person. I have to be exposed. I have to be exposed. Like if I say something that's very upsetting to you, or insult you, or disrespect you, uh, I have to be witness to uh, to like you know your facial features re uh, reflecting that, and that hurts me. You know, like wow, I really hurt that guy's feelings, or I see how that affected him, and I caused that. Yeah, yeah. Even if you didn't mean to. Sometimes and that that can that, that can make you oh my gosh I didn't know by saying that I was gonna hurt this person's feelings. Well, yeah, that's a great point because on social media, if I told you the same thing, it hurt your feelings. Maybe I didn't intend on hurting your feelings, and now you're over there with your feelings hurt. But I have no idea because I didn't see your body. And my ego is too big to say that made me mad, or or I, or I just on the other end I shoot back with some sort of criticism, and yeah. you know then then we're in this Twitter like, fight. Well, we got into Brian. I was just <laughs> thought we were talking about cats, you yeah, know, or whatever. Well, but people become so impersonalized. You know, it's, it's so impersonal when it's when there's it lacks context. It lacks being personalized when people aren't looking in, looking in the eye or yep. you're just texting or chatting. You, I can be texting with my wife on my phone, mm -hmm. and she can misinterpret something I say sure. unless I put like a little wink emoji with it or a smiley uh, because she wouldn't something she wouldn't know how to take. And saying yeah. here, I would, I would wonder, like, uh, what do they mean by that? Like, someone texted her the other day and said something nice, but then put this, like, worried face, this worried emoji. And we're like, is, is she being dramatic? Because this person sometimes does some drama. The like, ambiguous she, emoji. Yeah. Like, what, is that what it's called? No, no, no. I'm just saying oh, that happens yeah. a lot. Like, where you're like, what does that emoji mean? Why did they put yeah, that there? Yeah, so did she put that there? Like, like, or the hands up emoji like this. Like, hey, you can move into this house. You know, or it's in a good spot over here, like that. Like, hey, I keep sending you stuff, or I don't know. It could be like, um, and then we thought, well, maybe she just hit the wrong button because I do that a lot too. Yeah. And then I hit send. Sure. And sometimes it's a swear word or a word I wouldn't say to somebody. And I'm like, oh man, I just sent that to my mom. Like, hey, it's not what I meant. Of course, my mom's cool. She's like a sister. She'd laugh at it. Yeah. But even even in our personal close relationships, we misinterpret, and there's such margin for error. For sure. If we're not just doing this, you, you, you can hear my voice, you can understand my tone, my intent, you yeah. can feel. You know. And and if and I can just and I can if I if I'm not sure I understand, I can ask you to clarify in real time. Mm. And go, oh, well, what did you mean by that? You know, why'd you go like you know why'd you go like this whenever you said that or whatever the you know whatever the body language was. Well, on social media, it's like, what'd you mean by that? It could be like, what'd you mean by that? Yeah. Or it could be. Well, can you clarify? What, what did you mean by that? I don't actually understand. Yeah. I'm trying to understand. So much gets lost. But you that. could interpret it one way, and I meant it another. Mm. And now it's like we're off on this other trail of like going nowhere in a conversation. Yeah, that's why I think like I've tried it. That is a problem, and I like I've 
try I used to be you know we're in that generation where we can remember very clearly before text messaging and having a phone in your pocket before the internet yeah before the internet was invented well maybe not invented, well, well, but before it, it was widely household. available it wasn't household yeah it wasn't widely available yeah. and um where was I going with that? I lost my train of thought. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. Oh, no, I remember. So, yeah, we're from that generation. And uh, so then I remember when texting was, like, available to everybody. Everybody, pretty much everybody has a phone in their pocket now. You can text anybody at any given moment. Um, and we all took, you know, full advantage of that. We'd have full conversations through text and everything else. I feel like I've, fi I've finally gotten to a place now where unless – they're really it's somebody that's really far away that i can't see in person at all i only want to talk about where are we meeting at what time you know i don't if i've got something i need to tell you i'm gonna wait until i see you to tell you about it yeah. not you not just you oh, anybody, anybody, everybody yeah because yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's important yeah i even yeah. do that with my wife you know if i know if she's like she'll this will happen you know and because we're it, the, the way our culture works, we, we do have conversations through text. It, it happens. It oh, happens yeah. on social media all the time. I think it's highly text. diluted conversation, but yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, my wife will text me something, but I know I'm going to be home in 20 minutes. And so I'll either purposefully ignore the text and just wait till I see her to give her the answer, or I'll call instead of try to text back because I don't want to be in, or because yeah. I'm driving and I just don't want to be misunderstood. You yeah. Know? I want my tongue, like that, that dynamic you were talking about. Yeah. Or she maybe she'll take it wrong, or I'll take something she says wrong, and then there's a misunderstanding. So yeah, a lot gets lost. A lot gets lost. We talked about Neuralink the last on our last podcast. How yeah, you may be able to read minds. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> they, yeah. Seems a little bit like um, Cyberdyne systems kind of stuff here. You know, Terminator Two and Miles Dyson and having to take out the the. Uh, the machines before they fully exist and take us over, you know, that's that's, that's some like end of days kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Now, if The Simpsons would have made an episode about that in 1992, I'd be real worried. Yeah, because they have so many episodes. They that a lot of stuff. It's weird. Yeah. Now they didn't. I don't think because I think I've seen every episode ever. But um, yeah, nice. it's, it's interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, the Simpsons have been around forever too. I remember watching them as a kid, like. Uh, yeah. They've been around since probably. I'm just purely guessing. We can look it up, but I, like early '90s, I would late say '80s. 80s. I'd say at least mid '80s. M I remember mid, when Bart 80s? Simpson's face was like disproportionate still. Yeah, like they had a kind of a crappy artist, whoever it was. Like his face was like kind of like disproportionate. But then as the years came on and the the seasons, like. It got the character, the cartoon got better looking and more proportionate. Yeah, yeah. But they prophesize a lot of stuff, right? Like they prophesized. There's you can look it up on YouTube. Just search like Simpsons prophecy prophecies or whatever. The 9/11 attacks. There's a bunch. Trump presidency. He's going down the escalator waving. Yeah, and then there's and then that's exactly what happened. He's wearing the exact same tie and everything. Um, there's a the uh, the supposed insurrection. Uh huh. Of what, January sixth. January sixth. Yeah. Like that took place, which I thought was pretty laughable. They call it insurrection. And then like a year later, the the Taliban in Afghanistan stormed the government buildings and took it over with machine guns. Like, that's an insurrection. But I'm not getting political here. But the Taliban stormed. Well, their when, own government. When Biden pulled out, just yanked everyone out. Left oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That whole, the airport. Yeah. That whole shit show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, government buildings, everything, machine guns, RPGs. I mean, that was an insurrection, but. Um, well, not only that, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but the summer prior to that January 6th was when every like cities, all a lot of major cities, they were burning down police stations, breaking into courthouses, and everything else. Yeah. And the government government is aren't isn't having hearings about that. Yeah. So my and I apologize, but yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get back to the Simpsons episode. Let's get back to the Simpsons. Yeah. But uh, I have a, actually I have a big problem with that because. What what is different between what happened on January sixth and what happened all summer of twenty twenty one, with all the riots and protests and something? The only difference is who they attacked. They attacked this time on January sixth. They attacked the government, right? Yeah. Um, well, and that's still sketchy from my understanding. Like, well, yeah, they weren't actually going. Like, in, I yeah. actually know people who were there, and they're like, "No, man, that's not." Of course, I don't, I don't know either side. I wasn't there, but yeah. like you're saying, yeah, I'm not condoning behavior on either side. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, they didn't burn down the Capitol though. 
<laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't. Like, they did like, less damage, right? Way less. Oh yeah. And our government was formed for the people by the people. The the people that are in yeah. that Capitol building, in theory, by the way that our country was founded, are are just normal, regular citizens like we are. They're they're equal to us. Actually, yeah. As citizens, we outrank them. They work for us, right? So why is it that they? When they get attacked, they got the script we're having twisted. hearings over it. Yeah, yeah, they got the script twisted, and there's power to be had. But I'm no. not condoning January 6th, by the way. I'm not saying that. No. I'm just saying that it's hypocritical the way they're treated. Totally. The incidents. Is... But but the, the the guy with the the animal skin, mm. the animal skin. Yeah, the QAnon the guy. With the tattoos on him. Yeah. There was a Simpsons episode with a guy dressed just like that, that with the same shape tattoos in the same place. I saw that, man. Wild. Now, this was like, we're talking 20-some years ago this episode yeah. was created. Or 10. Know. Like, it was way before. And you're like, how in the world? Like, you couldn't have. In, in this many times, like, I always wonder, who writes the script for The Simpsons? Like, I want to know who this person is. A lot of people say that's <laughs> uh, evident. It's, uh, isn't it Matt Groening? A lot of people say there's yeah, evidence yeah. for. Um, Is he the Antichrist or something? No, that there's <laughs> the t- the time travel exists. Well, like that he's a traveler, or that he's linked in somewhere, and he gets these messages and ideas, and then it overlaps years later with his yeah art I mean, and creation, of, maybe. Or a lot of people theorize either he's Matt Groening or somebody he knows is is time traveling, or uh, maybe time isn't linear, and they're just able to access these what we would consider future moments. Yeah. Um, or yeah, I've also read conspiracy theories that um, when the Simpsons episode was published, it it definitely hadn't happened yet. There was no time travel or anything. Um, however, the, all these events were pre-planned, so that it, like we're being warned. And and this is getting real down like conspiracy alley, but uh, I'm just talking about what I read. Yeah. Uh, that they're pre-planned. It's like, oh, so so the Trump Trump getting elected was all orchestrated. The nine eleven was all orchestrated. The January sixth guy with the hat. Everything that they prophesize, they're just saying, hey, this is what's coming up, and somebody is, you know, a, a puppet master making it all happen. You mean like in the government, or you mean like on a spiritual level, like bigger, like a simulation that we're seeing? Good question. Or do you mean it both ways? I just meant somebody, yeah. But that, that's a good yeah. that's a good point. Is it in the government? Is it a human? Or is it I, I, is it God? Is it aliens? I think I think in the government you could on a very limited scale do that because you can only do so much. But if there's like spiritually from the God level mm-hmm. or simulation or God level, whatever, that's beyond what we can see or understand right now. Sure. As far as our understanding of what we can see and understand yeah. how we define such things, but that would make more sense to me, um, and that's happened throughout history. So okay, so like, let's, let's run with that times, though. Yeah. So like, let's say it's God and He's orchestrating all this stuff. How? Do, why does Matt Groening, the writer for The Simpsons, how? Why does he have access to that? He's the Messiah. Right. <laughs> is, is he a prophet? I, I, I don't know. know. Like, or well, here's it depends on who you ask. If you ask. Uh, a Simpsons fanatic, they might go, "Hell yeah, he's a prophet." Yeah. Well, if you ask, you know, your typical typical churchgoer in in the United States of America, if you said, "Oh, that guy's a prophet," well, most of them are raised to believe that The Simpsons was a bad show because Bart would say some mildly profane things, yeah. and so they would go, "Oh, that that's blasphemous. That's how could you say a guy like that's a prophet?" Yeah. That's like saying the guy who made Beavis some butthead or Family Guy is. Sure. You know, like, well, how could that be? That's so, like, non-church God-like. But they or would say, they oh, perceive, oh, oh, right? it could be a prophecy, but it's from the devil. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, based on your understanding of that, um, who really knows? I, I, I can't say if, if you were Matt Ronan and, and we were sitting here going, dude, how did you get so many of those episodes, like, years before it ever happened? Yeah. It's, I, I, it is I'm not. I'm it's not weird. saying you're you're receiving messages from the devil. I'm not saying you're the Messiah or a prophet from God. I don't know, man. Like, and you might not even know. Yeah. There are some people who are like, they just have an intuition about things, and they happen. Like, or they just they can have a feeling. You ever, you ever get, like get a, or has anyone gotten a feeling and called you and like, dude, I just had a feeling that I was supposed to call you, and you're like, dude, I am so going through something right now. I wanted to reach out to someone, but I. I just didn't. I'm just too deep in it. Yeah. 
you know, they felt something, some spookiness connection that we can't see. That's like, oh, I need to talk to this person. Or it yeah. happens a lot where my wife and I will text each other at the same moment. Hmm. Like this happens frequently. Or I'll text her, or I'm in the middle of texting her, or same with my mother. And my phone, in the middle of text, it rings, and it interrupts my text. And I'm like, hey, I was literally just texting you. And we hadn't talked in like two days, or I hadn't talked in like all day if it's my wife. Sure. It's like, why did we both suddenly go, oh, call text that person? Where did that sudden, simultaneous yeah. idea to connect come into both of us? That happens a lot, that yeah. kind of stuff. That raises the question, like, are we connected in ways... Uh, especially with people we're familiar with, the most familiar with, that we don't even understand. You know, I think so. Yeah, I think it'd be hard to say we're not. I, I, I don't know if it's completely related, but the, the uh, there's a whole quantum entanglement and quantum yeah. uh, theory where something that happens on the corner of this table, um, and I think it's different from the butterfly effect somehow, but uh, something that happens on the corner of this table, and one little atom could completely affect another atom that's a billion light years away yeah. somehow, which is hard to prove. I don't know how they prove that. We don't have access yeah. to places mm-hmm. billions of light years away, but um, I think maybe on small models they've proven On that. small scales, I think they're proven things, and so we're looking at probably saying, and I'm not an expert on this, but probably if it's, can we prove if, if it's true on the small scale that it could have or is true on the larger? larger. Yeah. And maybe, and how does that relate to maybe that's how maybe you're and uh, Jamie's brains are connected somehow through quantum entanglement. And it's like simultaneous. Yeah. Even if we're miles apart. Yeah. Because and, it's and like what one, is that? Yeah. One thing that's that's affected here, like one thing that's affected here, this other thing's like billions of light years away. It also gets affected in the same way at the same instant. And you're like, well, wait, that doesn't make any sense. And it's like, I know. Yeah. But it happened. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It, as far as how we understand how things work. Maybe it's just we're not far enough along in our knowledge of the universe and how things work yeah. to understand how it works. Yeah, because we're limited to like understanding time and space. Yeah. And, um, and so that's the reason that we're like, how could that even possibly happen? Bec- and usually the reason is that there's too much space in between them. How, how could something way over here affect something way over there if they were closer to each other we, we wouldn't be quite as amazed right and and i think well i saw you running so i decided i better run too right and next to him hey are right. you okay or if he's yeah. running for survival maybe i better run too because i'm gonna get eaten <laughs> if there's something he's running from yeah exactly so that would make sense yeah so maybe like you know we're li- i think we're limited by time and space i think that's our limitations and the way that we understand the world is through time and space and uh, and things happen that defy those two elements that that we can't wrap our brains around and that's interesting that reminds me of um, a month ago I went to an event by Dr. Joe Dispenza if love that guy okay yeah I went to his event in Denver Colorado and the big thing I walked away from that with was well he taught us how to meditate which that was like spookiness growing up where I did yeah people that, was that devil was that devil stuff pretty much yeah. even though the bible says you know to meditate on the word of God daily it uses that word but people have a different idea about what that means the big thing I think in the community I come from is they don't understand it they've never been taught so they see it as like a foreign religion or something yeah. but it's not it's yeah. literally your body and mind doing what it naturally does you're just tapping into that and so you're not you know it's nothing external it's very internal but when I went to the Joe Dispenza event, one th- he taught us how to meditate, and he taught us how to have a clear intention on something. And he said, look, suspend what you think you know, and just humor me. Like, just experiment with this. Just That's a fun experiment. So I did what he said. I wrote, I wrote some things down. I did the process he said. And this is the difference between what you're talking about. We understand how things happen, and we don't understand how things happen. Mm-hmm. There's like uh, what he calls the Newtonian effect, cause and effect. We understand that. What he's saying on the quantum level, there's there are effects that are caused by more than just cause. It's beyond cause and effect. Hmm. Um, and so my thing was, I had this new speech I've been given, um, or I created, and I, I've taught it a number of times, but I really want to take it more mainstream. It's like my next big 
main message. Yeah. yeah. And and it's more of a training actually. And it's called the the leadership battle plan or battle plan for life. And um teaches people how to um, overcome challenges in life using a proven military battle strategy that we use in combat. And yeah. it works. Now I've used it. I've helped people do it and literally they've gotten results in an amazing amount of time. So I wanted to get booked to speak on that one mm-hmm. instead of just my resilience message that I, I normally do. And so the whole weekend, I meditated on that. I meditated on going and giving that speech more, getting booked for that speech more. And I got home on uh, Monday morning. I did meditation morning and night. And he said, look, his big thing is what you meditate on, you draw near to you. Um, basically, you can't control it. Don't try to control it. It'll come and it's time. And just sort of be open to it and kind of kind of just hope and ask that it'll come in a way that's surprising yeah and it'll entice you to keep going after it because you see even though you don't understand it, you tapped into something and you realize it mm-hmm. well there's that speech I was wanting to give more I got home on Monday morning and on Tuesday I got a call uh, to go speak in Greenville Texas which is about an hour east of here mm-hmm for their city, the city council, leadership, city employees, city leaders, um, a leadership. Now, the guy who booked me, I met once, he interviewed me for a podcast. We haven't talked in probably a year. Gotcha. I get home from this event where I'm meditating, I'm doing the speech more, and I get a call. He's like, hey, we've got the certain budget. We need leadership. I thought of you instantly. Two days after this, my buddy calls me on the phone and uh, we haven't talked. We ride motorcycles together. He's a great dude. We haven't talked in man, probably eight or nine months. We've just been busy. He just, you know, his marriage ended. You know, I've been gone. Yeah. This is a different guy. This is a, a day or two after the first guy. He goes, hey, man, um, could you teach the battle plan to about like uh, 20, 25 people? Like it's out of my own pocket. You know, just let me know what it costs. Of course, I don't want to charge my friends. So we're trying to work out. Um, and we will, but this was a day or two after that, that first guy called me, which was a day and a half after I got home from this weekend event where Joe taught us how to, um, meditate on something to bring it into your life. Yeah. And I just got booked a third time for it. Now I only went to this event like a month ago. Yeah. And that keeps happening, right? It, it keeps happening. And, um, yeah, I, did, I got booked in Phoenix um, last week. Last week. Right. So that was about two or three weeks after uh, the, the event that, that got booked. We can't explain that. Yeah. We can't explain it, but it happens. You know? Good but yeah, so, like, with that battle plan for life, I was thinking about it intentionally in a certain way that he was teaching. And he actually has, like, he started to get medical studies and university studies, like, behind some of this quantum stuff that yeah. he's studying and they're 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 showing results in in ways that even a lot of his scientist friends are going well that's not going to work that won't make sense and then they're like they come back to him and go how did that we don't even yeah well that's how i became aware of him is because i follow him on instagram yeah. and uh and i think he posts a lot of stuff on there about and it sounds real woo woo, but uh, I think there might be something to it, and I'll explain. Why it do, it does to a person who's highly judgmental. Yeah, I'm way more of a believer now. Yeah, uh, but he talks a lot about like healing yourself with your mind. But I, I, the reason I think there might must be something to that is because the way that you describe the meditation that, that he does is, you know, you said that, and correct me if I'm describing it wrong, but um, you kind of you focus on what it is that you want. You you know you don't you don't specify or try to control how or, or when it comes to you. You just focus on it. Well, that sounds a lot like prayer. People have been praying for. I mean, in all religions, most religions pray and and have for you know since the beginning of humankind. Yeah. And and, and I th- at least what I was taught as a kid growing up uh, is that when you pray, you basically you, everybody close their eyes focus on you ask for what it is that you want to see happen or not happen or whatever you're grateful you know and all this 
That's the same thing almost. It's a med- prayer is almost a meditation, like, like I think Joe it could be, does. I think it's a synonym for it. Uh, I think they, there might be differences, but I think yeah, I think prayer prayer can definitely be called meditation. Here's where I learned about Dr. Joe's thing that's different, and this actually this led me to believe and given what I understand at this point in my life, as well as the results I've seen from doing it just a little different way, I think, and this is going to sound blasphemous for church people, I'm not being blasphemous, I'm just thinking out, I'm thinking out loud. If you think about lack, and how much you don't have, and how much you don't lack, what do you think you're going to see and find more of in your life? Lack. Sure. I was taught growing up, to pray from a place of lack. Oh God, please, please heal this condition. Or please do this thing. Or please fix this thing. By praying that way, I'm acknowledging that I'm lacking something. Gotcha. The difference, and I don't know that what I'm about to say is even contradictory, um, but I found this to be true in my life as I started doing it. I think I was taught to pray wrong. And, and one of the things that Dr. Joe talks about is he didn't say pray, but that's really what he's kind of saying. Meditate, pray, whatever. Yeah. Pray or meditate from the place of that wish already being fulfilled. Like, think about what you would feel. Like, imagine whatever it is you want that you have it now. And, like, what's the emotion you're experiencing? Like, because you got it. Keep focusing on that emotion. It's not fake it till you make it. I mean... We can imagine being with the girl of our dreams when we were single yeah. and how great that would be. Nobody has a lack of imagination or ability to imagine. So you're not faking that either. But like, what if this thing that you want, think about what you want in your life. If you meditate on um, the emotion of like, I already have it. Even yeah. though you know you don't. That's I'm not saying fake it till you make it or act, act like you're rich if you're broke. Like, no, you're broke. <laughs> yeah. Like you're broke, you're broke. But if you're thinking, but if you, but if you're broke and you imagine what it is, oh, I have lots of money in my bank account. And how would that feel? I have lots of money coming in all the time. Yeah. What's the emotion behind it? Yeah, like exactly. I don't worry about things as much. I have as many money fights. And the the emotion is one of the keys that he talks about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's experiencing the emotion because he talks about something called epigenetics, and I'm no expert on any of this. But basically, I think he says it like this: like. Our genes don't cause disease, but our genes are influenced by our environment, which can cause disease in our genes or something like that. And when you're thinking these better thoughts, you can actually have, I don't want to say a positive charge, but a better outcome with your gene expression yeah. in your body, uh, which that, that through emotion from your mind can come about. And so when I was imagining getting booked to give my, my, uh, leadership battle plan or battle plan for life speech. Mm-hmm. And I was focused, I was focusing on the emotion of like, what if I was doing that right now? And like, Oh my gosh, like I'm so fulfilled. I love this. I'm having fun. I've got videos on the screen portraying some of the points I'm having fun. Uh, I'm making some certain points I'm going to make. And I know people are going to react in a certain way. That's helpful. Yeah. Like I was, I was seeing that in my mind. I was feeling it emotionally. And then, Three or four times in the in the three three and a half weeks after being home, I get calls and I get booked for this yeah. by people I haven't talked to in months, or one I haven't talked to in like three years because I spoke to, for their convention and they were in the audience three years ago. Sure, sure. And so it's like it's, it's like you manifested it. Yeah, it's manifestation. It, it, yeah, and so like I I don't you know when when I think about how I was taught to pray, I I kind of look back on like religion as a whole. We know we know there's been good sides to religion and some horrible sides to it. Yeah. And I, and I think I think back on like the Catholic Church because I was raised Catholic, and this is nothing against the Catholic Church, but if you uh, if people knew they could access and commune with God in whatever way you even understand God, the source of everything, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter right now for the sake of this um, this this uh, discussion. If people knew they had the power to connect to where we come from, like the ultimate source of all of us, mm-hmm. you couldn't control them. But if I taught you, hey, 
you have to come to me because I'm a holy person and I wear a funny hat and a robe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm the you, only person with access to God. Yeah, yeah, and you can't read the book that that's based on because it's in a different language, maybe called Latin, for example. I'm not saying this is the case, but we all know there's been corruption for centuries in the church. So, I mean, no one's hiding this. So I've taught you, I've conditioned you, I've taught you that you're separate from God. And now I'm going to paint a way back, a pathway back for you to follow. Yeah. Well, what if one of those ways is going, well, you need to pray from a place of lack and keep coming back because here's the thing. I know if you keep praying from, from a, a place of lack and not having not even just material stuff, but healing or whatever in your life, I know you're never going to get it. Mm-hmm. So if you keep coming to me, well, I can kind of dictate where you're going, what you're doing. Yeah. Because you would, God. you would pull me out of the picture. You wouldn't need me if you realized you're already connected. Yeah. And that's something I wonder about a lot. And I'm not saying, like, I don't know. I know I come from a church background. I don't know. But when I hear people say, you know, sin separated you from God, and, you know, Jesus and Christianity is like the pathway back, the crucifixion, you know, all that, fine. Um, but when people go, you know, you're you're separate from God, and now you need to follow our pathway back, I wonder, am I separate from the earth? Am I separate from existence? Are you mm-hmm. and I separate? Like, is that, is that, is the inside of that banana peel from that banana I just ate, is it? Is the inside of that banana peel separate from the outside of it? Like, no, it's one with it. Can you take my my blood cells out of my body? No, like my blood cells are one with my body. Like you can't yeah. take them out. Like, well, you cut you open though. You can cut me open, then it would heal itself and it would reproduce yeah. more. Sure. But That's like, true. yeah, yeah. Like taking something, can you take something out of something that makes up that thing? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, but I wonder that. Well, yeah, and what so, and you take it a step further. It's like that banana you, you referred to the banana you just ate. Well, now it's been eaten. So, is it still a banana, or is it you now? Because it's in your body. It's a so, part of me. So, is that banana Brian Fleming now, or is it still a banana? And if it's still a banana, when does it become Brian Fleming? Because, you know what I mean. Yeah, at what point? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I I see I see your point. Like things are fluid, and you know there's a there's that. Um, same debate with uh, you know a, a hot tub, a hot button items like abortion for example when is a baby a baby it, because it starts out as a sperm cell it actually doesn't start out as a sperm cell it starts out as a banana that a man eats it converts it into sperm and then it's you know and and so then it mixes with a woman's egg and then yeah. something and then then you got one cell in there and then you got two then you got three and then it's got a heartbeat and blah blah, blah. Yeah. Well, at what point is it a baby because it used to be a banana, you know what I mean? So or it used to be nothing, but but it was something. Well, before it, it was somewhere. a banana, it was yeah. like the soil or whatever, yeah. you know. Where like, so because matter is just constantly changing. So I can take the sand out of the beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it used to not be sand. It used to be rocks, and before rocks, it was you know something else. But um, but yeah, man, that's crazy about the manifesting the manifesting thing. Yeah, and that's what people call it. I know it's kind of like where I come from, people say, oh, it's a new agey word. But that's just one way of saying it. Yeah. But, like, th- this isn't just my life. Like, there was one time, like, my mother, my own mother, she's been healed miraculously of two incurable diseases in her life. Mm-hmm. There was um, earlier in life, um, she just she just has belief, I don't have this. Like, oh, well, she's in denial. Well, it went away. Yeah. Because she stopped believing in it. Then she had osteoarthritis years later, and there was a church, um, in Cornerstone Church in San Antonio, Texas, where I live, in uh, Pastor John Hagee's church. And they were having a, a miracle healing service. Mm-hmm. And she had dealt, dealt with this so long, she could barely move her hands. It was stress related. Yeah. It was like, so, apparently, according to Joseph Spencer, like something like 80 plus percent of all disease is stress induced. And so she's like, and stuff, yeah, yeah, well, she believed because she'd heard of this church. She believed that I can get healed at this place. Yeah. And she's like, when I visit Brian, I'm going there. And she called her brother, my uncle Joe, and said, hey, I'm going to Hagen's church. I'm going to get healed tonight. She went in there. She got prayed for. She walked out. She had no pain in her joints. Osteoarthritis has no cure. She'd had it for a couple of years at that point. Yeah. It's never come back. 
Interesting, man. Now, what what happened? Because Joe Dispenza at his retreats, it stuff like that happens there too. Yeah. Not just at this church. And they believe two different. They have two different religions or whatever. But what? Well, well, and his isn't even a religion. But um, I think this. I think the thing they have in common is the person in question with the issue. Mm. They have. They have some sort of very strong belief mm-hmm. that I am healed or I am. And when, when you get so like my mom's like, I'm not leaving that church tonight until I'm healed. Yeah. Like she's like, I'm not doing it. Like there was something that like came out of her, yeah. not just the disease, but like there was this, this bitching determination. Like I'm not moving yeah. until I get this. And it left. Well, that's evidence for, uh, <laughs> it's wild. Like, that's evidence for like, I explain that. Uh, you know, yeah. there's the whole concept that we create our own reality. You know, there, there's one one way you can look at things is like, we're reality is reality. It's happening around us, and we're just perceiving it. We're seeing reality. We're hearing reality. Whatever. Uh, but then another way to look at it is maybe we maybe we are uh, creating our own reality. So in that example, your mom was intently focusing on being healed. Or you're intently focusing on getting booked for, you know, your other speech that you want to do more of. Mm-hmm. The things that those all have in common is is intently focusing on it and even uh, imagining what it would feel like if that were to be the case. Yeah. And so that's, I mean, I'm not saying that I believe that uh, we're creating our own ra- reality because I don't know, but or to our that's extent. but yeah. that's evidence that we're. Cre- for creating our own reality. I, I read a book recently about um, ancient Toltec wisdom. Toltecs were... Uh, the Mexico, right? Uh, yeah, the Mexican mm-hmm. Arizona area. To, yeah, yeah. Um, Southwest. Yeah, yeah um, I don't know, maybe 1700, something. I could be way off. It was, it was a long time ago. Um, and they have this thing called the Four Agreements. And um, Oh, yeah, that's a good book. That's mm-hmm. a great book, right? Isn't it? Is that the I, book you're... Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward okay, to it. Okay, go ahead. So you know that one of the agreements is uh, be... Um, is it be meticulous with your words? Not They don't use the word meticulous. Be... Oh, it's like be solid with your word, like honest with it. like like. Basically, yeah, be careful with your words. It's uh, be... It, it's the word... Like, descri- let your word be your word. Be, it, it describes Nothing. perfection. Yeah, make yeah. sure your words are perfect. And, um, and part of that is, you know, they go into like, oh, do you know why you, you spell a word? Because it's a, it's a, you're casting a spell with that word. That's why they call it spell. Do you know why it's called a sentence? Because, um, think about the judici- judicial s- uh, system. I sentence you to five years in prison. Well, I can take a sentence. If I, if I utter a sentence, it's the same thing. You're sentencing Something. this thing into reality right and so th- that's the concept right uh-huh. and there's a couple of others like that yeah. there's spelling there's sentence there's a couple of others that i'm forgetting because it's been a while you look at the roots of these words and meanings yeah and um and so i mean i don't think anybody can claim that they they know for certain what reality is there's we have so many questions right quantum physics and the way things work and everything else well the most certain people who are absolutely stuck on and certain of what they how they know it is yeah. i actually trust those people least because I know, I know enough in my life to know. At this point, the more I know, the more I figure out I don't know. Yeah. And anyone who's that certain can't be possibly telling the truth from a place of, of understandable, uh, intelligent fact. Right. Like they're leaving no margin for their own error, and yeah. nobody's that intuitive. Yeah. So yeah. So that's my my point is yeah. is, is that nobody really knows what reality is. Uh, and, and to your point, anybody that says that they do, they're full of shit. Yeah, um, it's hard, man. So if we look at that evidence, I mean, that's not the only evidence, but uh, there's evidence against it too. But if we look at these things that we're talking about, that's a, that's evidence that we're actually creating reality. You know, things are, we're, maybe we're uh, collectively creating reality. I don't know if it's true. It's fun to think about. Or maybe we're designed in some bigger way to create our own reality to an extent that our, our software system that we're a part of allows us to. Yeah. You know, and what beyond that, like we can't even see, you know, the, the veil is over us, you know, yeah. we, we just don't even know to think, to understand, yeah. to see. This could all be yeah. a huge simulation. I mean, we just, nobody really knows. And that's what's incredible, man. And what's frustrating about it, I think, is that a lot of the big questions that we have about space and time and 
realities and how ma things are manifested mm -hmm. and what is the true nature of God and, and all of these things is, is like the most frustrating thing is based on my current understanding of the way things work, I'm never going to know. I may never know. And that's it's hard to plant a flag because the, the more you learn, the more you go, oh, I got to go back and move that flag up, up the field more. Yeah. Like, because I didn't know this before, but now I understand this. Well, where's the flag going now? It goes somewhere up in front of me yeah. or where I'm at, which is further down the road. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. There's, a, and I'm, not to just, don't, you know, keep going off on this topic, but have you heard of the double double slit experiment? I think we've probably talked about the double oh, slit yeah. experiment. Oh, yeah, in that in that machine with the photons, like there's two slits. Yeah, and they spray a bunch of photon, photons at it. There's two slits cut out. There's a wall behind it, and when somebody's observing, of course the photons hit the, the panel, but... It, some escape through the uh, slits and hit the back wall, and you have two slits of photons on because the back wall. Because those were the holes in the slit, yeah. and then it hit the wall in the shape of what it would be, like a, like a stencil. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, would do, it does what you, would, it, what you would expect it to do, yeah. and that's when there's an observer. And when there's not an observer, when nobody's in the room and they just push the button and nobody's in there expecting anything to happen, um, it doesn't splatter on the wall that way. It's not two slits. It's completely random. This is like science slides. they're observing too. This isn't made up. This isn't like, like, what do you what do you call it? Like um, quasi science or whatever you call it. Yeah. Um, no, this is a real experiment. No, these are real scientific been experiments. Duplicated many over times over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you have the two slits, but then places it couldn't have gone through outside the two slits. Yeah. It's all over. Right. And when so, there's no observer. Yeah. So. With any expectation. Yeah. So there was no expectation. Nobody was watching, and it acted differently. And the only variable that was different the other time was that people were watching. Yeah. And it's with funny expectations. Because those little those little um, photons or whatever they are, yeah. They act different based on if they're being watched. Well right. human beings, if we know someone we care someone who we respect is watching, I'm like, well, what do they think of us if I say we this? Behave differently, or like yeah. we behave different based on who we're aware of is watching us or observing us. Right. If I'm in my house talking to my wife and I have a real opinion about somebody, I'll just go off and I'll lay it out. Mm -hmm. But if I, I have mutual friends who respect us both, I'll probably be a little more generous or in the way, no, look at me, I'm changing how I'm behaving. Yeah. I'm altering, why? Well, because I'm being observed. Yeah. Well, how are those things, like those things that made up that experiment, yeah. well, we have a lot of those things, it's my understanding, in our bodies that we're made up of, the energy field of yeah, we're protons, of neutrons, whatever protons it was. And all that too, yeah. Electrons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's mind blowing, man. And then you know, I don't know. I could go off on all kinds of like stuff like that. Like, you know, we look at the photons, and that's one of the smallest. You know, maybe it's not a photon. Maybe it's an atom or whatever. Whatever or wave or whatever. Whatever yeah. the smallest thing that we've identified is. Um, how do we know that the, it doesn't get smaller than that? That's just how small we can go in and observe. Just like the universe, a lot of people are under the belief that the universe is completely infinite. It just goes on forever, which is crazy. Uh, could be true, but Pretty it's just a crazy. Thought. It's a wild thing to think about. Same thing, or and especially considering the rate at which we understand is expanding, yeah. which we could never catch up to. Like yeah, ever. yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Like billions of light years every second or something stupid like that. Yeah, not with our time and space limitations, yeah. but also maybe it's infinite. Things go infinitely small too. We just can't, we just can't go any deeper than. Well, because when you cut the atom, you cut the nucleus, you cut the. Eventually, you've yeah. got nothing left as far as we can observe and see. Yeah, but, but what's if that we could, stuff made if, out if, of? If we had a better microscope, maybe we could observe and see more, but we just yeah. don't have that ability yet. Yeah, maybe and so it's how? Infinite. How little does it go? How, yeah. And, and then yeah. where do we fall on that spectrum? Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. We think we're a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because maybe it's infinite both ways, but does that put us in the middle? Well, that's a pretty egotistical thing to think. Like, why, why would we be in the middle? Why us? You know, why why this dimension or whatever? Would we be further along or would we be way near the beginning or beyond? Who knows? Yeah. Or if there is a scale, if it's infinitely expanding, how could there be a middle? Right, because it, it's what is it, the middle? It, it is, is the middle always of simultaneously changing. By the time you identify yourself in the middle, it's already changed. Yeah, there is no middle. Yeah, it's like, what's the middle of infinity? And we're and we're mad at someone because they have a different belief than we do. Yeah, they call God something different, or they they have a different idea about police than we do, or 
Yeah. Or they have a different skin color than we do. It's yeah. like, if, if people realize how freaking small we are, mm-hmm. like, not that things don't matter. Yeah. But people have this habit, especially nowadays, it's just, it's just fed to us and cultivated to make mountains out of molehills. Sure. Like, I think so many people nowadays feel so meaningless in their lives mm-hmm. that if they get a chance to jump on a bandwagon, politically, socially, whatever, yep. they do it because they don't even realize some of them, they feel so meaningless in their lives. At least they'll stand for something. Yeah. Even if it is like a horribly stupid thing to stand for or to associate yourself with. Um, or maybe yeah. it's not. No, that's a good point about perspective, though, man. And a lot, like a lot of people will say, for example, you know, I've got that cabin in Oklahoma, and, and there's very little light pollution out there. And so at night, you mm-hmm. can see the stars. Like it's it's crazy. It yeah. blows my mind. I, I when for, you can I get forgot. up on top of your cabin and lay there too. Yeah, and I forgot. He's got a deck on top stores. of his cabin where it's like an observation deck, and he can just unobstructed. Yeah, but yeah. you know, we the average person, including myself, because uh, I just recently have been reminded about how many stars are are in the sky we don't see that some people go their whole lives grow up in in big cities and don't grow up in Manhattan, city. Chicago, Detroit yeah and it, you never see it and um yeah. but you know you see that and then it, it does back to your point about like putting your problems in perspective like it does put things in perspective when you think about how small we really are um that's the same reason I like. I'm not a real big fan of living in Texas. I think you 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 like uh, Michigan a lot better than Texas. Way better. I'm a big fan of the Rocky Mountains. And, yeah. Uh, or anywhere with mountains. Colorado was the best place I ever lived. I loved it there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, or a huge ocean. I think what's attractive about being living near or when I was in Alaska, there's gigantic mountains. I think what's attractive about that is it helps you put things in perspective. When you have a huge mountain or a huge ocean on the beach. You, you sort of get a glimpse of, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm small. My problems that I stress about, you know, if you put it in perspective, it's not. No, you can tell me that story, but if, ne- if I've never stood in the mountains or at a beach or an ocean, like, you can tell me about that, but I can't experience what you did either until I do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, because, and what's different there too, like here in Dallas, there's a bunch of man made cities, civilization lights things are going on you go to nature and there's just something different yeah. like there's something calming and the older i get the more i feel it you know not to sound too freaky um but like i think i've learned more about god walking through the mountains alone than i've ever learned in a church like yeah not because not saying there isn't good stuff taught there there is there's a lot of good stuff i think there's a lot of baggage and bullshit too no, i know there is um trust me i've worked with some <laughs> but but there's also good there. But my point is, there's a I think there's a primal connection we have with nature, that the less we're in it, the more we divorce ourselves from it. Even not even yeah, knowing. I agree. And I mean, when I'm in the me, the woods, the mountains, like that's that's my place. Yeah. It's and the older I get, the more I feel it. And I don't know if it just comes with age, or why that is. I never used to know it. I used to feel it, not realize it. Now it's like more important than ever. Which is why my wife and I are looking into maybe buying a place up in northern Michigan. Yeah. Because it's just so beautiful, so much nature. Yeah. It has four seasons, all the elements that you can get from all the the seasons that exist. You get insights in a place like that that you can't get walking around downtown Dallas. Like yeah, it's for just sure. I don't know where why. It's for me at least, that's just how it is. It's uh because it's just natural. You know, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's what we're supposed yeah, to be, right? Nature is natural. Yeah. It's not that having a civilization isn't natural either, but there's something different about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I agree. I feel I have I've had the same experience with nature. I I love hiking and camping and fishing and doing all that stuff. Um. And uh, it makes sense too because like how long have we had metropolises like Dallas or New York City? Or, Historically speaking, not or, very yeah. long. I mean, yeah. I mean, if, you, if yeah. you painted a timeline of human history that was a mile long, the amount of time that we've had electricity, <laughs> you know, is uh, science is, is only like about two hundred years old. Two centimeters in that mile. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, you know, there was a Roman not, Empire. Now, now here we are. We got. Yeah, that's true about the Roman Empire with like uh, well, that architecture. Was, there were that buildings. Wasn't, that wasn't that long. I mean. Relatively speaking, it wasn't that yeah, long. Two thousand years ago, compared yeah. to how long the Earth has been here, 
yeah. as far as we understand. 2,000 years ago, and then, so that, let's say, what's the average lifespans? I don't know. I, I can't do the math. Maybe. I can't do the math. 80, 100 head. years? Yeah, rounded to 100. Let's say the average lifespan is 100, which it isn't. That's only 20 generations ago, and then we'll add, you know, a few, because that's it's just not 100, 25, 30 generations ago. Yeah, and that's just recorded history. Like, like recorded history in, like, 10 generations from now is yeah. going to be amazing. Because right now, we're doing this. As long as we don't blow the earth into smithereens and destroy ourselves and extinct ourselves with like nuclear weapons, yeah. as long as we don't do that, this yeah. video is going to be around. Yeah. It may, that's, it and there's more, re, there's more recorded history. Maybe it will be. I or maybe it'll be translated into a new mode of understanding where we don't need the video because it's all in our DNA now and we just know this stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's wild, but it could be. Yeah, it could be, yeah. <laughs> I wonder, like, how much has been, like, because obviously a lot of written history has been lost, right? Because we don't, it however, be however it they be. were writing it down or however they were documenting it, mm -hmm. we don't have much access to, you know, we have hieroglyphs and the pyramids and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I wonder, yeah, we have, like, in, it, it is our view that in today, it's our observation that in today's day and age, so much is being documented because there's YouTube, there's TV, there's radio, there's podcasts, there's all these things. Uh, just so much of it, right? Uh, but I wonder if we'll somehow accidentally move to another technology where we're kind of like, you know, it's hard to find a VCR these days or whatever. <laughs> Like if you want to watch something on a VH, a lot, how much? How many? Ask v anyone under twenty what a VCR is. They can't tell you. <laughs> how many? How many v VHS tapes will never be watched again? And it's it, they were it was the only video that documented that event because we're just we're just letting that technology float away, right? Maybe the same thing will happen with this sort of technology that we're using today, where yeah. it's like, oh, we let that phase out. We can't really access that. Stuff and back anymore. in the 80s, if you had the shoulder camcorder, like a TV broadcaster, with a big old VHS tape you had to put in and shut it and close, yeah. you were like rich. You were real, real. Yeah, yeah, you were the real deal, man. Nowadays, it's like, pfft, you need tape. Yeah. You're like, oh, can you tape well, the I'm episode? Turn the camera on my watch. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, yeah, can you yeah. tape that episode for me? Someone under 20 would go, tape? What, scotch tape? Gorilla tape? Like, what do you mean tape it? Exactly. Back in our day, they you call, get plain they record. Film. They still call it film because they used actual film. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, this has, I think, been a pretty good episode. If you uh, agree or disagree or with anything we said or have an idea or a question about life, that's what this podcast is. Feel free to email us at questionsaboutlifepodcast at gmail.com and uh, let us know. You know. Leave us a review if uh, you like this. You know, leave us a good five star if you like it. Uh, if you don't, eh, do what you want. <laughs> write but, a comment if you don't like it, just so we yeah, get some comments. Yeah, and write good reviews too. If you enjoy this, write good reviews too. Um, but yeah, to shoot us an email, keep in touch if you want. Um, that'd be great. We're happy to address something maybe that you've been wondering about, but you didn't know how to ask or you hadn't wanted to talk to, or maybe you're afraid to ask it, and we won't use you know your full name if you don't want us to. But, and we we. We're not going to have all the answers to your question, but it, it's more of maybe we'll have a discussion and theorize about it. Yeah, you might learn a little bit more about it that could lead you toward the answer maybe you're, you're looking for. So, till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Yep.